Hi, and welcome to this section of the Advanced Calculus 2 Tutor. And this section and the next, and remember it's a sub n, n is equal to 1 in this case, 2 times 1 gives me 2. Okay, so that's the first element of this sequence. a sub 2 is equal to, now n is equal to 2, the second element in the sequence. 2 times 2 is 4. a sub 3, I think you see the pattern here, n is equal to 3, so 2 times 3, plugging in for n, 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, so that, there's 6 right there. And then a sub 4, would be 8 for the same reasons. Put in 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So you see what you can do here. You can go from 1 to infinity and for every value of n you can put it in here and you can get a value of a sub n. And these are just elements. It's for n is equal to 2. The third one is for n is equal to 3 and so on all the way up. And then finally the last one is a sub n, the nth term in the sequence. And if you let it go on forever and ever you're going to have an infinite number of terms. Okay, that's what that means. Now these are just a list of numbers. There's nothing too fancy about them. It's pretty simple so far, right? You just have a list of numbers. That's what a sequence is. Now, if you think about it, a function, which is something you learned a long, long time ago in algebra, is kind of like a sequence. I should say it this way. A sequence is kind of like a function, but only defined at certain values. For a sequence, you can only pick integer values for n n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3. And you're getting these values of a sub n out. So I'm drawing an analogy. I'm not telling you it's a function because it's not a function, but it behaves kind of like a function. So you'll see in a little bit, we'll start taking limits of these things, and you'll take limits in the same way that you do when you're dealing with functions. Okay? So uh, what, I'm, what I'm leading up to here is you can plot the elements of a sequence, okay, just like you can plot a function. Now, normally you would never care to do this, but uh, occasionally they show you this in the book. So if you were going to plot n, just that generally go off to infinity, we're going to generally be studying sequences and later on the series that go off to infinity. So you see, it's just a list of numbers. Uh, they have a very specific pattern. I have an infinite number of them here. Okay? Now the question is, what would happen to the elements of the sequence, to the numbers, as, the, uh, as we start looking over here, as we get to very high numbers of n? What would it look like? I think you can kind of see intuitively, if you were to just kind of take a quick peek here. This would be n, the number that I plug in here, and this would be a sub n. Okay, just forgetting about this, forget about calculus, forget about anything else. So, let's go ahead and do some problems. We're going to do various types of problems and we're going to drill this stuff in. I'm going to show you some tricks on how to do your, your homework. Okay, so what we want to do here is we're going to look at a sequence and we're going to write the first five terms of this sequence. Okay, so if the sequence is given by a sub n is equal to n over 2n plus 1, you might be asked on a test, give me the first five numbers in that sequence. Okay, there's no, there's no trick questions here in this class, so I'm just giving you some practice. So if you were going to give me the first value, you would say a sub 1 is equal to what? It would be 1 over 7. And then a sub 4 is going to equal 4 on the top here. Uh, 2 times 4 plus 1 is 4 over 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. And then the final one here, I know you guys are or enjoying uh, this, watching this arithmetic here. The fifth one, uh, 5 on the top over 2 times 5 plus 1. It's going to be 5 on the top. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11. So those are the first five elements of the sequence. And if you were going to write it down in your homework, you'd probably go ahead and do the curly braces because that's really how you write sequences. And I say here n is equal to 1. And I say here n is equal to 2. And I actually write this down. n is equal to 3. And I write this down, I say n is equal to 4. And the reason I do that is because what you're going to eventually be trying to do is finding a sub n. So what you're going to try to do is you're going to try to find some function, for lack of a better word, some relation, so that when I put the n's in, I'm going to get these things back. So I need to find something that I can, something I can monkey around with this n is equal to 1 to give me 1 half. And something I can monkey around with this n is equal to 2 to give me 1 fourth. And, three to give me one eighth and so on and so on. So I need to find, uh, they're very important. You're going to definitely be asked this on a test for sure. So you gotta make sure you understand this. That's why I picked quite a few problems here. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing in uh, with mathematical rigor what we were doing with the graphing earlier. We're going to be given a sequence, okay? It's gonna be in terms of a sub n and we're going to be asked, does this sequence converge as the terms approach infinity? And if they do converge, uh, what do they converge to? What number do they converge to? So that's kind of like what we did before when we graphed it. That one sequence converged to a value of, I should say the sequence. I'm getting ahead of myself. The sequence converges to 1. 
Okay, so if we were to take the elements of the sequence and we were to plot them on that graph, we would find out as, as we get very, very large values that these, uh, these guys are going to actually approach the number one. The elements of the sequence are actually approach one. So that's what we're going to do in this section. We're going to be taking limits and we're going to be using L'Hopital's rule a lot, essentially. So I'm going to give you several flavors of examples to get good at that. Let's say you had uh, A sub n, the numerical sign of the elements of the sequence alternate from positive to negative, okay? Because if you put n is equal to 1 here, you're going to get negative 1. If you put n is equal to 2 in here, you're going to get positive. So the negative drops away. If you put n is equal to 3, you're going to get negative again. n is equal to 4, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So if the people that are writing your problems, or in real life, if you end up with a sequence that has alternating signs, like maybe you have positive one half, then negative one fourth, and then positive one eighth, and then negative one sixteenth, or whatever it is. You want positive, negative, positive, negative. Sticking a little, which is this sequence I'm trying to find out, is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared over 1 plus n cubed. The reason I just write it like this is because, remember, the alternating sign only comes about because of this little nugget right here. So when I take the absolute value, I just strip that sucker off, and all of these terms are going to be positive. Okay? So I need to find the limit of this thing. Now, I'm going to have infinity on the top and infinity on the bottom if I try to plug in infinity, so I have to use L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to say that's the limit as n goes to infinity. What's the derivative of the top? It's 2n and the derivative of the bottom is going to be 3n squared. Okay, 3n squared because the derivative of 1 is 0, and the 3 comes down there to make 3n squared. Now let me try to plug in n is equal to infinity. Well, I'm still going to have infinity on the top, and I'm still going to have infinity on the bottom. So it's another limit. I'm going to try to do L'Hopital's rule again. So I'm going to say limit as n goes to infinity. I'm going to do it again. What's the derivative of the top? It's 2. What's the derivative of the bottom? 2 times 3 is 6 n to the exponent minus 1, which is just over 3 to the nth power. And just for grins, I'm going to do this here because I think you know, you'll find it useful in a minute. I'm going to rewrite it a little bit as n approaches infinity of pi divided by 3 all raised to the nth power. I've changed nothing. All I did was write it as, as pi over 3 to the nth. And if you want to convince yourself of that, that's pi raised to the nth and 3 raised to the nth. It just gives you that. So all I did was do a little bit of rewriting. Okay. So if you were to try to evaluate that, you would plug in infinity here, okay, uh, infinity there, and you would think, well, probably it approaches infinity. Now, let me ask one half, which is one fourth. So I'm going to get a small number. Now, let's say n is equal to three. So for this one right here, this is for n is equal to two, okay? Now, let's say n is equal to three. So I have one half times one half times one half, because n is equal to three up here. That's what the exponent means. So I'm going to have, uh, this is for n is equal to three. Okay, that's going to be 1 over 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so it's 1 eighth. So it's getting smaller, you see. What I'm going to have here is 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, okay? Because that's all you want, okay? And you're still going to have 1. 1 to the infinity is 1. So it's telling you that if, if r is a special case of being exactly equal to 1, then these terms converge to the number 1, okay? And obviously, if r has a different value outside of those ranges there, positive 2, positive 3, negative 10, whatever, it diverges because it's just, they're just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? So, just to sum it up one more way, this is the theorem how you would see it in your book, and then I'm going to write down here, I'm going to do this a lot, I'm going to write down the word basically. Those are the elements of my sequence, and I want to find out how they behave as I approach infinity when I get to the infinite term. So what would happen? I'm going to have the limit as n goes to infinity of arctan of 2n, okay? So basically, I'm going to have arctangent of infinity is really what I'm going to have. I'm going to have, eventually when I try to plug this in, I'm going to have arctangent of infinity. So I want to find out what angle that corresponds to uh, and, and see if this thing converges to anything or not. So what this means is that the tangent of some unknown angle is equal to infinity. That's what this thing means. That's what happens here. So what happens here? Tangent is sine over cosine. So I'm trying to find out, is there an angle such that I put it in here and I get infinity? So if I look at my unit circle, this denominator is going to go to 0 when cosine goes to pi over 2, right? So cosine of pi over 2 is 0, right? 
So I'm going to have something on the top over zero on the bottom, which is going to send me off to infinity. 